Hi guys, this is Sandhya. I'm back with another lecture on macroeconomics. So before I start with the lecture, just a brief introduction about myself. So I'm Sandhya Rao, working as an assistant professor at St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. And uh, in this lecture, in today's lecture, we're going to cover two topics, stock and flow variables. And the next is trade cycle. All right. So um, prior to this lecture, I have briefed you about uh, what macroeconomics is and, you know, what is the circular flow of income. So that's uh, so in today's lecture, we're going to continue with the other two topics that are stock and flow variable and trade cycle. So um, stock and flow variable, what exactly do you mean by these uh, two terms, stock variable and flow variable? So when we talk about stock variable, it's something relating to a specific point of time. And when we talk about flow, it's about period of time, which means you cannot measure it at a particular point of time because it's in, it's in a flow. And stock can be measured at a particular point of time. So if I say that, uh, you know, any particular item, if I pick any particular item from the balance sheet, then it will represent a stock variable because balance sheet is, is measured at a particular point of time. Let's say on 31st March 2020 or let's say uh, 31st March 2019 to uh, 18 or whatsoever be. OK, but when we talk about profit and loss, then the PL statement is always prepared for an year okay, for a financial year for an accounting period of let's say one year or six months of or three months or four months whatever or on monthly basis so there we are doing it for a period of time right so it's uh, when we talk about stock it's a static concept it's not moving okay and when we talk about a uh, flow variable it's dynamic in nature because it's in moving condition okay it's not constant it, so we have to calculate it for a period of time second thing is when we talk about stock, it does not have any time dimension, okay? And when we talk about flow variable, it always have a time dimension added to it. So if we go into detail, then a flow is a quantity which is measured with reference to a period of time. Thus, flow are defined with reference to specific periods. Now, these periods can be anything. For example, it can be hours also, it can be days, it can be weeks, it can be months, it can be years. Okay, so it can be anything. For example, income of a person is always measured for a period of time. Okay, when we say that the person has received income, it will uh, be for a month, it can be for uh, uh, a year, it can be for uh, a week, it can be for six months, it can be for four months, it can be for any period of time. But when we talk about stock, let's say if I say that, you know, I have um, four apples, then that four apples is not for a period of time that I am having four apples today. I'm having four apples with me right now. Okay. At a particular point of time. So that is stock. Another example of flow variable can be, let's say expenditure or savings or depreciation or interest, export, import, change in inventories and, you know, change in money supply, lending, borrowing, rent, profits, etc. So all these kinds of things are measured over a period of time. For example, depreciation. Depreciation is always charged for a period of time. Okay, we divide the um, cost or the uh, value of any fixed asset over a period of time, and that uh, and that amount is actually known as depreciation. Whatever the value of that asset will be consumed in that particular period of time, that will be known as depreciation. So it is always measured over a period of time. Similarly, interest, when we invest some amount in, you know, bank or any other investment project, we receive interest out of it. Now that interest is for a particular period of time. It can be for a month, it can be for six months, it can be for four months. Likewise, export and imports are also measured for a period of time. Let's say imports for the month of April, imports for the month of January were so and so, okay? Imports for the month of February were so and so. So these are flow variables which are measured over a period of time and that period can be hours, days, weeks or months or year, okay, which specify some time dimension. So that are 
uh, or they are flow variables. Now, when we talk about stock variable, it is something which is measured at a particular point of time and not a period of time. And this is static in nature and does not have any time dimension to it, which means it does not have any length of time. So it can be today, it can be tomorrow, it can be yesterday, it can be 4 p.m., it can be 5 p.m., it can be 1st January. So here it's a specific point of time. We are specifying some point. So let's say if I say that the country owns and commands stock of machinery, then that will be on a particular date, on a particular point of time. Whatever building, accessories, raw materials, etc. they have, then that will be counted on that particular point of time. Because it is possible that, you know, it might change in a period of time. Whatever I'm having today might not be the same that I am having tomorrow. Okay, if I say I have four apples today, I might not be having the same apples tomorrow. I might have consumed something. So I cannot say that, you know, I had four apples uh, today and tomorrow. I will say I have four apples today. And for tomorrow, I will have to give the another information. Like even if I have four apples tomorrow as well, then I will say, I'm having four apples on uh, whatever the date may be. And I'll say the same thing for another date as well. So we'll specify it for different, different point of time. Okay. We cannot club them together. Similarly, whatever. So basically any kind of, you know, any kind of asset that you have with you, then that will represent a stock variable. Okay. So uh, stock of capital or stock of any raw material, then they all are measured for a particular point of time. Balance sheet always represents all the assets on a particular point of time. And PL statement always represents all the items for a period of time. Okay, so try to understand this difference between point of time and period of time. When I'm saying a month, it means it's a period of time. But when I'm saying today, it's point of time. When I say for two years, for three years, that's flow okay that's a period of time but when i'm saying you know um first january 1997 that represents a particular point of time if i say in the year 1997 that that represents a period of time because year is a long period okay so that represents flow variable so um stock and flow variable is, is a very, you know, like a small concept, but it's very useful because in economics, most of the things that we study will be either stock or flow variable nature. So it's very necessary. It's very important that you understand the difference between these two things. Now, moving on to the next topic, that's um, trade cycle. So often uh, we have came across these terms, you know, that the economy is in recession, the economy is recovering, the economy is in boom period, the economy is in depression. So what exactly is these, are these, uh, you know, different, different phases of uh, economy? So what do we call them? So we call them trade cycle phases. Now, what exactly is this trade cycle? We all know that business, you know, business, it's, it's uncertain and uh, we live in a, we live in a very uncertain world where, you know, every day something new keeps on happening. So with all these changes keep on habits, which keeps on happening on daily basis, they impact or they have a bearing upon the working of our economy. Our economy responds to some changes or our economy responds to certain factors which are of volatile nature. Okay. So our economy depends upon the price level, depends upon the employment, depends upon the uh, interest rates prevailing in the country. And we all know that, you know, employment, interest rate, price levels, these factors or these uh, variables are very volatile in nature. Okay, they keep on changing. So that is why with the continuous changes which keep on happening in, the, uh, in these variables, the economy also have to respond in a certain way. And these responses are actually known as the different phases of trade cycle. So starting um, with what exactly trade cycle means, it's a fluctuation in economic activities, especially in employment, output, income, price and profits. Okay. 
also it's not very periodical okay it can be it can last for three years or four years for some company or for some industry and it may last for six to eight years for any other industry also the impact of trade cycle is differential which means that it affects the different industries in different ways we cannot say that you know if a certain activity or a certain uh, activity or certain event is uh, impacting a particular industry in a certain way then it will impact another industry also in the same way so we cannot assure you of that because every industry is of different nature so they will be affected in different ways now starting with depression okay uh, before i start with this let's just you know go through this diagram if you could see this diagram it's 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 going upward when uh, when we are having a boom period then it's going down which shows recession and when we are having or when we are at the lowest possible point we call it slump or you can call it depression and then after every depression the economy starts to recover which means the slope will increase it will go upward so we, we are moving upward towards the way of boom period so this is how the cycle is always you know operating and the cycle keeps on repeating itself after every recovery there will be a boom and after every boom there will be a recession after every recession there will be a depression and then again depression will be followed by recovery recovery by boom boom by recession and then depression so this this cycle keeps on moving so if i start with the depression so if you could uh, if uh, as you have just seen in the diagram that depression was the lowest possible point okay which means when the economy is at the lowest point we call it depression so at this point the level of output the level of uh, demand falls drastically okay we have the lowest demand we have the lowest income and we have the lowest production and lowest employment and prices and profits everything which means that the economy is slowing down is moving down is going down okay so why does it happen or what are the reasons behind these things so and what exactly you know uh, depression is so it's a phase when you know economy is facing a downturn there is a very uh, huge amount of fall in the demand and when there's a fall in demand what happens is that the suppliers they are forced to keep their prices low so as to you know generate more demand because they feel that if they will lower down the prices people will start demanding more but even when they have reduced the prices people are not increasing their demand and in that case it becomes very difficult for the suppliers to continue with their operations okay and to bear the cost of their workers so in that case the employment opportunities are also lost new employment opportunities are not being generated also the existing employees are being removed so there's a high rate of unemployment and with high rate of unemployment and with reduced sales and with reduced profits the company or the firms also uh, you know uh, like start reducing their output because they feel that if there is no demand for their commodity and if they are not able to you know um, sustain or retain their employees in that case they feel that they should also um, reduce the production of the units so in that case the level of production is also low so all these things when come together they represent a situation of depression so in that case there will be pessimism leading to closing down of business firms most of the firms are being closed down during this depression period because it becomes very difficult for them to survive in the market with tough competition around okay so if i give you a real life example so when the great depression period struck the entire world then in that case in that period most of the uh, companies you know especially the um, small scale industries or you know the new the newcomers were greatly suffered so the new firms were being shut down because already they are new in the market 
and they don't know how to cope up with such situations and you know with the tough competition that they are facing it becomes very difficult for them to generate good demand for their products okay because whatever demand is prevailing in the market that will be uh, fulfilled by the existing suppliers so newcomers are greatly suffered or deeply uh, you know they, they are badly hurt by such kinds of events which are happening in the economy next thing is recovery see um, bad phases cannot continue for a long period of time every depression is followed by a recovery now in this phase there's a slow rise in output employment income and price which means that the economy is trying to buck up and they are trying to stand okay after falling down they are trying to get up so the demand for commodities start increasing the increase there is an increase in investment also bank loans and advances which means uh, that people are willing to invest also pessimism gives way to optimism which means people have started believing they are having hopes that you know good times will come so the process of revival and recovery leads to prosperity so if you could see this picture there there are three uh, phases being shown over here in the first one or in the left uh, picture there's a guy who's you know bending down which means he's trying to pick up he's trying to get up and in the second picture he's trying to he has already stood and in the third picture he's trying to run which means the first one or the left one picture represents depression the second one represents recovery and the third one represents running okay which means prosperity or you can say boom period so recovery is when you are trying to you know uh, you're trying to fight back all your uh, difficulties you're trying to recover okay so just like uh, a human recovers from his illness the economy is also trying to recover from the illness of depression in this case and in this case the demand has slowly or you can say gradually starting started to increase whatever uh, loss of demand was being seen or be, was being observed in the depression period will start to fade away now so people will start demanding now also the government will try to induce certain injections into the economy and you know they will use their monetary and fiscal policy to recover the economy so with the government's um, aid the economy will start to recover so it's not that you know apne aap koi bhi recovery nahi hoti hai apne aap demand nahi increase hoti hai only when the economy will you know only when the government will infuse injections i know they will uh, inject money or uh, yeah obviously money in the circular flow of income then people will be more inclined to invest and you know employment opportunities will start gearing up public uh, the government will also you know try to do public expenditure or you can say uh, they will start building up infrastructure which will again in turn give rise to new employment opportunities so with those added employment opportunities the people will have increased income and with increased income they will start demanding more and the consumption will also increase and ultimately the producers will also start producing more so that is how the economy will again come back on track then there's a boom period after every recession there will be a depression period after every depression there will be a recovery and after every recovery there will be a boom period so it's a state of affairs in which real income and employee income are high which means you can say that the economy is at its peak level there are no idle resources we are operating on full employment and you know there is no wastage of material so we are you uh, we are operating with full efficiency okay we are we are uh, not wasting anything we are not wasting any material we are not uh, we are not having any idle capacity we are not having any idle resources also there's a rise in a rise in wages there's a rise in prices there's a rise in profits and interest also you can say that you know when there is a boom period in the economy inflation starts inflation starts why because you know people are having excess of money with themselves people are having or you can say people are enjoying their increased income and uh, there's excess of money supply in the economy so when there's so much of funds or when there's so much of money in the economy people will continue to demand 
and there's only a certain limit till which the producers can supply okay they cannot go beyond the uh, full capacity they can only operate at optimum level or you can say they can only operate till full employment beyond that obviously they cannot produce because every machine have a, a certain capacity they have a certain limit so they cannot go beyond that but human wants have no end to it people cannot stop their demands if they have money they will keep on demanding so in that case what happens is that the producer start to increase the prices so as to curb down the demand but already they are having excess of funds with themselves so they are not willing to you know cut short their demand so they still demand at the high or you can say the increased uh, prevailing prices so in such a situation it becomes very difficult for the producers to control the demand and that is a situation of inflation so whenever there is a prosperity happening or whenever there is a boom period in any economy it also represents inflationary conditions now it's not always bad to have inflation in any economy because when the economy uh, let's say in recession period when people are trying to you know increase the prices or let's say when there's a uh, the the boom period has only started okay so on the onset of boom period if the prices are increasing so in that case it represents that you know people uh, if the demand is increasing then the uh, then the producers will try to increase their capacity or they will try to increase their output but if the inflation still persists once they have reached their maximum limit then in that case inflation becomes a risky thing so it is only uh, beneficial for you until you have reached the maximum capacity of your production after that it becomes very risky and very problematic so again boom period represents that there will be demand for bank loan and you know there is an optimism everywhere people are uh, believing that you know economy will catch up and everything will be good everything will be according to their plans you know profits will be high so there's a general uptrend in the business community however these boom conditions cannot last long because the forces of expansion are very weak and there are bottlenecks and shortages okay there may be scarcity of labor raw material and other factors of production as i've told you that you know uh if the inflation starts or if the inflation persists after the maximum pos uh, maximum capacity then in that case the boom period will start the new recession phase okay and the banks may stop their loan these conditions lead to a recession because the government will ultimately try to you know in take away the money the excess money from the economy because inflationary conditions obviously cannot prevail in the economy so the government will try to hold back the money from you and they will uh, use their contractionary policies which will again lead to recessionary conditions in the economy so now what exactly is this recession so when the economy starts to fall that's recession so when the entrepreneurs realize their mistakes they reduce their investments employment and production so there's a fall in um, employment and uh, that also again leads to fall in income and expenditure prices and profits so optimism gives way to pessimism so people have started become, becoming negative now banks reduce their loans and advances business expansion stops this is a state of recession which ultimately leads to depression and then again after the recession depression will be uh, followed after depression again there will be a recovery recovery will be followed by a progression or you can say prosperity or you can call it boom so this is the cycle the trade cycle okay and these trade cycles differ from industry to industry from firm to firm it cannot be same for all the companies or you can or you say for all the industry it varies okay because the nature of every industry is different so what exactly are the causes of the trade cycle or or why is it that you know depression happen or why is it that uh, uh, recession is happening or why boom is happening so what are the reasons so we have uh, divided divided them into two major factors internal and external and then they are subsequently subdivided 
so when we talk about internal factor that means that these are the factors which are actually um, on which we have certain amount of control okay government can try to control them with the help of uh, fiscal and monetary policy but when we say external factors then the government have no control over it okay so in internal factors we have demand investments money supply and macro policies so as i've told you that you know when the demand increases or rises it has a bearing upon the economic trade cycle so let's say if the demand is increasing so when the demand is increasing the production will increase so when the production will increase you will be requiring more employees to you know do the work for you so there will be more employment when there will be more employment and there will be more production there will be more sales there will be more income as well so with this kind of a situation the economy will move from recovery to boom period okay so the economy will start to grow but if the demand is falling if the demand is uh, moving down it's the demand is decreasing then in that case it will lead to decrease in the output also and with the decreased output people will start you know they will start removing their employees because ultimately they do not want to add on their costs so with reduced employment opportunities with reduced demand and with reduced output it's a sign of depression or you can say that the economy is moving into recession okay again money supply also has a bearing upon the economic trade cycle how if there is an excess of money supply in the economy again people will demand more because they have excess of money with themselves and with that increased demand it's the same thing it moves back to the demand factor only again okay so the same thing will be repeated over here as well so again with increased money supply there will be either recession uh, there will be either recovery or boom period now there are certain macro policies which the government undertakes okay uh, that i have already uh, you know discussed many a time that the government undertakes either fiscal policy or monetary policy so with fiscal policy if the company or uh, sorry if the government is you know trying to do more expenditure or if the company is following monetary policy and in that they are following expansionary policy then in that case again the income will increase and the people will find themselves with you know uh, in great prosperity and with high standard of living they will in, uh, they will start consuming more and they will demand more so that will lead to a recovery or boom period and the reverse of that will lead to recession or depression So these are internal factors. You can say that on these factors, the government have certain amount of control. But what about the external factors on which the government have literally no control? So natural factors are there. Okay, natural factors, as in you know, there are certain natural calamities which happen in any country or which might happen all across the world, due to which there's a economic downturn. Let's say the present. Uh, pandemic which is uh, you know which is uh, which has already engulfed the entire world uh, which is covid 19 so with that almost every economy is facing a downturn okay they are either running into recession or depression why because you know it have reduced the demand people are not demanding for commodities because uh, how are they going to demand if they first thing is that you know they have most of the people have lost employment people are not uh, uh, getting hike in their salaries and you know they have lost their bonus and so uh, with this reduced uh, salary or reduced income and also with a uh, high retrenchment rate the people are the people have stopped demanding now okay and with so less demand for commodities especially for the consumer goods the people uh, the um, producers have stopped supplying because uh, they obviously do not want to add on to their cost okay so in that case uh, or you can say this signifies a situation of recession or depression again war is a similar kind of a situation where you know people uh, stop demanding for the consumer and capital goods okay there's a there's a huge decline in the demand for consumer and capital goods we uh, or the or the countries which are you know involved in war they are focusing their uh, they they they, uh, they they focus more on the um military equipment okay they they focus more on the military equipment so as to win the war so in that case with so less demand for the consumer and capital goods again the economy will move into recession or depression because the economy 
generates maximum revenue from capital and consumer goods only so if the economy is not contributing for these uh, two products then ultimately the economy will suffer again technology see when there's a new technology that comes into your country it brings new employment opportunities as well okay new technology has come in new uh, uh, employment opportunities will be there so ultimately it will increase the income it will generate employment and everything will be good prosperity will be there optimism will come along in the economy so in that case the uh, recovery or you know boom period will prevail and population puts a very huge burden on the economy if there's an excess of population or you can say if the population uh, the number of people that there are in the uh, country exceeds the uh, economic growth in that case the economy will definitely move into recession or depression so it's it's always advisable to you know to control the population of the country or if you have already done that then you should try to increase the economic growth okay in relation to the population so your economic growth should always be in relative or should only should always be in relation to the population of your country so these are the causes of trade cycle as you can see now these are the two questions that you are going to do um, after this lecture so first of all you have to classify these four items into stop and variable item so you have to specify the reason as well so uh, the first one is capital so you have to tell whether capital is a stock variable or flow variable and you have to give a reason also again savings is uh, uh, whether saving should be termed as a stock variable or flow variable and you will be giving a reason for that again for gdp and for wealth also you will have to do the same thing then the next thing is the rate of inflation tends to rise in which phase of trade cycle and why okay so you have to give the answer to this question also so thank you guys this is it i hope you have understood it well and um, um, in the next video we'll be covering the uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply concept okay thank you guys